using expected value on the flop when you're drawing. A special situation arises on the flop when you can see two more cards. Here the probabilities and expected values change dramatically. This graph shows how the probability of catching significantly changes if you're going to see two more cards. When you are drawing, after you've seen the flop with two more cards to come, you're going to use the same general procedure as before. Number one, you're going to determine how many outs you have, but now you're going to use the flop graph to find out your probability of catching. You'll calculate your probability of not catching, you'll see how much is in the pot, and then you're going to determine your expected value. If it's positive, you stay in with either a call or raise of negative fold. Okay, quick example. On the flop, you have a four flush with no overcards and no straight possibility. You're in late position. The pot is 300 bucks, an opponent bets 100 and brings the pot to 400. You have nine outs. From the flop graph, find out your probability of catching. Wow, with two cards to come, you have a 35% chance. Okay, now we've got to do the mental math. We've got to calculate the probability of not catching. Well, if you've got a 35% chance of catching, you have a 65% of not catching. See how much is in the pot, and now we determine our expected value. If it's positive, we're going to stay in with a call or raise if negative fold. Okay, you've got to be able to do this mental math. It's not tough, but you've got to practice it. Expected value because 35% times the 400 minus 65% times the 100. 140 minus 65, $75 positive. We've got a positive expected value, and we would either call or raise. Extremely important point. Notice the flop graph, and then if you have 14 or more outs, you have a better than a 50-50 chance of winning. You are favored to win. Although rare, if you have 14 or more outs in the flop, you should not be afraid of a big foot bet or all in. Okay, now, using expected value on the flop when your opponent is drawing. If it works to your advantage to see two more cards on a draw, it works to your opponent's advantage in exactly the same manner. To get an opponent who is on a draw on the flop to fold, get ready to bet big. But as before, you want to bet enough to get him to fold immediately, but not so much that you lose everything if he's not on a draw, but had a better hand than you thought right now. You're going to use the same general procedure used when we want our opponent to fold with only one card to come. First, we're going to estimate how many outs we think he has. Two, from the flop graph, we're going to find out his probability of catching based on your estimate of how many outs you think he has. Three, we're going to calculate his probability of not catching. Number four, we're going to take a look at how much is in the pot. Number five, and this is where it gets to be tough, mentally, we're going to bet an amount which we think is going to give him a negative expected value. Then we have to keep increasing the mental bet until we're sure he's in negative expected value. Then we have to add a sufficient amount to try to make him fold. Okay, an example, and this is a little bit more difficult than the previous examples. Let's say we estimate our opponent has nine outs on the flop. With two cards to go, we have to look at the flop graph. His probability of catching is 35%. Well, if his probability of catching is 35%, his probability of not catching is 65%. We look at the pot, it's 300 bucks. You consider betting $200. This will bring the pot to $500. His expected value would be, expected value equals 35% times the 500 minus 65% times the 200, $175 minus 130, $45. That's not enough to put him into negative expected value territory. Okay, we now consider betting $400, and we do this mentally. If we did, the pot would then be $700. His expected value, 35% times 700 minus 65% times 400, $245 minus 260 equals minus 15. Ah, a bet of $400 would push our opponent into negative expected value territory. Now, and this is difficult. How much must we increase our bet to get our drawing opponent to fold? It's more difficult on the flop. Smart opponents will think in terms of the implied money in the pot as opposed to the amount that you might bet right now. This is especially true if there are several opponents in the hand. Some opponents will call with ace-king just because they believe in the hand. 
as always, your objective is to try to bet enough to get the drawers to fold, but not so much that we lose too much when we're wrong. At a minimum, we should increase your bet by, we'll say, 50% and possibly more, depending on your opponent. In this example, in step six above, we mentally bet $400, and that put him into a slight negative expected value territory. Well, 50% of that $400 is $200. So you would bet at least $600, hoping he's going to fold. 